Disclaimer. We are two regular guys who love to talk Bone Thugs and Harmony. We do not represent Bone Thugs or any Bone affiliate. We are also not Bone Thugs experts. The views and information you hear in this podcast may be based on personal opinion. Please feel free to leave corrections and clarifying information in the comments. And enjoy. What's up, y'all? Cecil West, Beyond the Harmony, beyondtheharmony.com. Back again, but not really back. Just in the middle of some kind of off-season kind of show with the one and only... Lippy! And this is whatever the fuck we're doing. We're here. We're not really live, but this is as close as it's getting. John, it's been Bro. it's been a long time. Bro, what are you doing here, bro? Is Beyond the Harmony back? I it feels I was like, man, it feels like I uh feels like I haven't talked to John in a in a long time. Uh just so everybody knows. Me and John do talk off off of the show, but there there is something special about the show. Yeah, I mean, so we've been on a hiatus for I don't know, is it six months, nine months? How long has it been? Uh, it, it can't. It's it's only going to be six months. Let's see. I think we. When was the the end of the season? We we did the end of season two. So mm, we did that April. We did that April eighteenth. April. Wow, is that late? Huh? I would not have yeah. guessed April. I would have thought February. So. Why were we gone for six months, and why are we still not back? And what the heck are we doing here? So the first well, uh, thing is is I'll let Cecil tell it. I mean, you you've been on a six month freaking life odyssey. Yeah, what you've been up to. Yeah, well, and and you know this happened last year too. Uh, and I explained last year we we went away. Uh, la- you know, last year I had some unfortunate family events mixed with the fact that I was doing my festival, and that really held me up. Uh, and then I said again, you know, this year that I was going to be back, I was going to do this fucking festival, and um, we we did the festival. In addition to doing the festival, uh, I I tour manage and i and i manage guys on my label so you know between doing shows with them and doing this this festival which is just like a fucking you know just a a a nightmare of things to do uh there was no feasible way for me to do beyond the harmony and take care of this festival uh and give my all to all of them and and you know i i think a break was and and may still be necessary you know you said what are we doing here and and what we're doing is uh you know i fucking uh i miss the show i miss the fans i miss the people i miss chopping it up but you know at the same time we we didn't want beyond the harmony to get stale and and it felt to me and and please correct me if i'm wrong lippy you know fans who whoever but it did feel to me um that it that it might have been getting to that that stale point at the end of the last season. In, in fact, we we called the last season a couple episodes early. So, um, so a lot a lot going on, a lot went on, a lot pulled me away from the situation. And uh, you know this this week I've just been like John, John, let's 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 fucking let's do a little beyond the harmony, Johnny. Even though I you know during my hiatus I've I've been like only into you know, the stuff that I'm working. So my job outside of this is, is also music. And I spend so much of my time listening to the, to the guys that I work with or the people that I'm booking that, you know, I haven't got any opportunity to like really listen to like, like bone like that. So I'm way the fuck out of the loop. I got no business even being here right now. Yeah. No, and it was a good thing that 
that you called it. Like, I didn't want to be the guy that said, hey, I need some time off, not because I was bored of bone or not because of anything like that, but I was super busy just as you were super busy. And the few times that people have reached out, like I got calls from Excel Beats and Brother Clay and other people, they got me at like the exact right moment where I had like 10 minutes to talk. And uh, yeah. I don't know how they time it perfect. And through those things, you know, it's kept, a li- I mean, it's not keeping the show fresh, but thankfully Brother Clay, you know, gave us some content along with D Hawk and Excel Beats. And so we've had a little bit of something. Plus, you know, I went to the Bone Thugs and Harmony concert, Hard Rock Orlando. Uh, that was a really good show. And and I, I think I uploaded like 16 videos. I thought I was only going to take like one or two, but it was going so good. I was like, man, I got to get more. I wish I had brought a better camera than just my cell phone. I thought I was just going to watch them. But once I started live streaming, I was like, man, it's going to be good to just release on the channel. And uh, so, see, and the best part about the show, I don't know if you've seen any of the clips, but the crowd responded the best to Lazy Bone Annihilation and Flesh Bones uh, Do You song or whatever it's called, You, you Smoking Doo Doo. Uh, those two had like the greatest reception, which is something I wanted to see because I was wondering, I'm like, Bone fans have got to be tired of hearing the same old playset. And we got to hear new, you know, new material performed that most people had never seen performed before. And the crowd yeah. responded well to that. Like they were like into it, like, whoa, it's something different. It's new. And then they even did Family Tree, which got the most views um, from people checking those daily uploads that I was doing. And and that made me happy too. Cause I remember when they were performing Family Tree, I was like, bro, this is cool, man. I always wanted to see this perform live. And somebody in the comments has such a good comment. They said, Crazy Bones verse belongs in a museum. And after I read that, I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. Dog. I got to go listen to this song again. And I mean, it's not like, like I hadn't heard Family Tree a gazillion times, but like with that said, like this belongs in the museum. I listened to it again and I was like, I didn't, I, I don't know if I fully appreciated how amazing that era of Bone was. You know, we always complain like, they're just not doing it like they did anymore. But man, that verse by Crazy does belong in the museum. And we didn't know what we had while we had it. But it's kind of cool to be semi back with you, C.S. West. It's been excellent talking to you. And we got a lot to talk about anyway, because so much has happened in these six months. Yeah, I got to say, too, like John, Johnny kept the channel alive. I, I haven't I haven't contributed a- any anything that you see um, has been John. And like, I, I mean, I haven't even. None of the social media, I, I haven't been on social media at all. I just recently just logged in um, for the first time during this time you know, in anticipation of knowing that, uh, we, we, you know, that we were going to jump on and do some off season stuff. Uh, so this is the first time I've jumped on any of the social media. Uh, I haven't seen it, you know, what's going on. And, and, and I do apologize too. I see, I have quite a few messages. We have emails, I have Instagrams of people hitting us and, and why, why aren't you hitting me back? And it just, um, I, I, I truly, I truly haven't been on, I truly have been away. I've truly been on a fucking, hiatus and uh you know but but like i said i did miss it and we talked a lot about you know do doing a doing a show tonight and um i made sure that i got in a little bit of homework not i'm not even close to as caught up as i should be johnny um but i I made sure to cover a little bit of homework uh actually right around the time that i was I went away, uh, that things started to get busy for me. You had just sent me the annihilation copies in the mail and I have them. I don't even know where the fuck I have them. I like put them, I, I took them, I put them somewhere and I don't even know where they are. I got to look around the house. There, there's, there's three copies of annihilation and like a copy of Mo Thugs and some other shit. Um, and that was right around the time I went away and, uh, I haven't, I haven't even listened to Annihilation yet. I feel like a piece of shit. I know a bunch of the songs, you know, from from them leaking and dropping before, but I haven't listened to Annihilation yet. I have been watching what you what you've had going on in the channel. Um, I, I will just say, shout out to to Brother Clay, who gave you the the okay to release re release uh, a bunch of those videos. We got the re release of Misery. Misery's been down. Um, oh, yeah. Of course, that that go hard, uh, brother Clay Fight Club edition, and then the 
the craziest shit is he, he let you re-release the uh, re-release the smoke on with yeah. April Love, and what what a reaction! Um, what a what a reaction! What a channel growth! Uh, easily the the uh, the video, at least the the most uh, plays for a non-original piece of content that we've delivered um, on here. And uh, that that was a really cool time for for me for me when I I wasn't you know in the channel like that um, you know but I I still get all the updates to my phone and when during that time when you would release kind of those three three songs back to back uh, and especially when the smoke on hit like my phone was fucking lighting up uh, and it was a real exciting time for the channel for the, for the behind the scenes of the channel yeah bro that that was. That, that took it to a whole nother level. I mean, we doubled subscriber count. Um, and <laughs> one of my, my goals that I'm tasked with is I got to get that one up to a million views. That's what I promised Brother Clay to get a million views. So I'm dropping bucks to make sure that we find a way to get that thing there. Um, Cause that was definitely a gift. And if we can get it to that point, Brother Clay has a couple more gifts to give, but we mm. got to show that we could get it there. So. It's on everybody. Pass that song around. Pass that track around. Get that thing to hit that million. And then uh, Clay is going to bless us, possibly bless us with some more stuff. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so I, I saw that. I saw it's crazy that you um, that you were chopping it up with, with, with D-Hawk, with Dragonhawk, because, you know, I've known of him for forever. He used to do songs with with bro the d hawk used to do songs with uh fuck man why can't i think of his name right now he's um used to do songs with vision x1 are, are you I serious of. no are you uh, for real i think i think, oh, okay. think d i th no i think d hawk and vision x1 have have a song together as well uh, that's amazing and then and then d hawk uh D Hawk and I can't think of who the fuck it is, but he's 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 on our channel as well. Um, and every time he pops up, I'm like, bro, you know, I, I I know you from when we used to do songs, and I think they they used to do songs together. Uh, so it was crazy to see D Hawk pop up here because because I've known of him. I'm bro, I'm talking 2000 and like two or three or something. Like I've known D Hawk. So when I saw when I saw you pop in that shit up with him i was like oh wow and then of course you you know you hit the all the live stuff and and you know i skimmed through the live stuff it's funny i skimmed through the live stuff more because i'm like all right i know how cecil west would be at a bone concert i i'm kind of trying to just watch this from the lippy perspective um so i i, I skimmed through them more to just to to watch through lippy's eyes and yeah. uh and then you know what else? You did the the Crazy Bone Excel Beats See Me Shine promo, which was a little cool, little short video. I always love yeah, when little, you deliver those little jewels. Yeah, a little lyric video. I mean, I that's like a big piece. Like that was when I when I went out there to shoot misery and got in the car with Excel and he played me See Me Shine. And I heard, you know, where it all began. And it was just mind blowing to hear his version of it. I know like a lot of Bone fans are like, this ain't the Bone song. And it's like, yeah, but this is if you want the history, if you want to know where it came from, it came from, from Excel Beats. You know what I'm saying? I love I the mean, voice. This ain't the Bone song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it ain't Bone. And it's like, bro, Excel's got it tatted on his chest. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he's he's like, man, see me shine. This is my track right here. And and I love his verse. And his verses are so good. And um, so I really love see me shine. Excel's, in fact, I listen to Excel's version probably more than the Bone version at this point. It's nice to like go back and forth. Like once you hear one version and then you go, with, so you hear like Excel's version, then you go to the Bone version. You're like, oh man, that's cool how Bone did it. And then once you get used to the Bone version, you go back to the Excel version. You're like, oh, that's cool how Excel did it. So like, I like them both. It's not like you don't have to think of it as there's only the Excel version or only the Bone version. And there's even more versions. There's a version with B2K on it. Um, it's like, yeah. it's, Excel's got a bunch of different mixes of it. And, uh, you know, that's like his pride, man. He loves that song. Like that song means so much to him. So that's why I always try to talk about it. I put it on the channel and, uh, and it was cool. So I, I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a huge fan of Excel beats and we even did in addition to the Excel beats, see me shine. He released an album dopamine and, and, uh, right around the time carbon monoxide was coming out. 
and dopamine man I, there's a couple songs on the album that i i play daily i play well not daily but when i get the chance to listen to music i i hear uh it's called um from the start man i i love that song so much um slide on it and uh the, the last track on the album and there's 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 a couple other good tracks on that album so check out excel beats dopamine and excel told me he's got another album coming out it's currently called through the looking glass it's it's a non-rap album and then he's got another rap album coming out so excel's got a bunch of stuff in the pipeline he's sitting on a bunch of busy bone tracks and he even said that uh he i think he did mastering for one or two songs on carbon monoxide i can't remember the titles he didn't produce it but he just i think he did something like mastering and mm -hmm. i'll just say this excel's got a special surprise coming at some point in the future but that's all I can say on that one. Shout out to Excel Beats, Excel Beats, and uh, John. Quite a bit of history. Excel Beats, of course, one of our uh, alumni uh, members of Beyond the Harmony. Uh, and then, of course, that led into you you dropping the the carbon monoxide unboxing. You got the standard edition, and you dropped the unboxing. How tell? Walk me through that, John. There was so much hype around carbon monoxide. I don't know the last time there had been this much hype for a, a busy album. I feel like it was like Song for You was the last time motherfuckers were this excited uh, for Busy Bone solo album with, with the antici uh, anticipation uh, that it was going to be, you know, as good as it uh, was going to be. So wa walk me through getting that thing in the mail did, did did it give you that old school bone feeling or was it just uh was it just like getting a, a cd at this point well th yeah the, C the cd part wasn't like the special moment for me um the special moment uh, it was it was just thinking i mean the part that we got to play in this being that we had one of like the early on interviews with blaze you know and then we, we blanked it out for a minute while the carbon monoxide album was coming together and you know finally getting to hear well actually leading up to it blaze he is a marketing maniac he, he's just like you cecil i mean he goes hard in the paint 24 8 i mean 25 8 he, he he's got that same spirit that we got if not more and so it was just it was a masterful thing to just watch how blaze uh did the did so many different hats to make sure this thing got together you know so that's like the angle i was mm -hmm. looking at it i'm I, you know there's the busy bone aspect of like hooray finally we got somebody that i, knows I, I loved his busy uh album. i loved this promotion you know because i you know i stay even though i wasn't logged in as cecil west i stay following like blaze and busy and shit on on my other account so of course i still saw a lot of the advertisement and i i've said it a million times so i'm not gonna ride this wave for for an hour like i have but you know blaze is a fucking a, a genius of a guy uh everything's so thought out you know even even the the front cover and and i'm sure you saw the video of like heaven's movie slowly morphing into the carbon monoxide cover did, did you see that video yeah, I think I did. I think so. Yeah, oh, dude, I was just like, this motherfucker Blaze is so smart. And and as John had referenced, we we did have to uh, we had to hide the Blaze interview for a little bit because it did feature some of the original demos from Carbon Monoxide, and we didn't want to take away from the Carbon Monoxide album uh, at that time. So we we had hid those. Uh, we now got permission from Blaze, I, I believe, right? Blaze gave the okay to to put those back up. Yeah, I forgot who reached out. They uh they wanted they were wondering where it came from. I was like, well, hey man, reach out to Blaze. They immediately reached out and Blaze said it was cool. I, I double checked with Blaze. I was like, I don't wanna just take his word for it. So I double checked. He said, Yeah, it's cool. So and then he yeah. even put that out. Like he even uh, co signed it and did a post showing that the interview was available. So like it was you know, much like and we'll get into this, but much like the feeling that I had at your show, you know, seeing what came up what what the seeds you know you plant seeds 20 years ago and then a forest grows you know if you plant enough seeds and i just felt like you know it, it's all blaze that made that album happen but i just felt like we had a root on that on that carbon monoxide tree you know what i'm saying like we didn't have a yeah. bark you know not a limb but like there was a tiny there was a leaf on that tree on that carbon monoxide tree that has beyond the harmony you know well what I'm I, I i think that we were in the original wave of people to believe in blaze um 
you know, and, and, and understand what his goal was and to, to support that, uh, you know, because I think, a, I think there was a portion of fans that just saw the, you know, YNTG video, uh, and, and just thought that blaze was just a feature, but you and I, and, and I would say, you know, a good, there was a good portion of fans that understood like blaze was, was trying to play a bigger role. And, you know, I'm really proud of the guy. Cause he did, he, he had a goal. Uh, he, he told busy way, way back during, during their song, Hey, we, we can do more, you know, there's more we can do. Let me prove to you. And he put together these demos. And, and I, again, I got to say, if you, if you haven't heard the Blaze interview um, because it was down or you haven't heard it in a long time, uh, it, it's about a year old. And it's episode number 12 in the first season. And it is two parts. And it is fully worth uh, listening to. It's about a two-hour interview. And, um, you know, we, we were in that original wave, I would say, that understood what Blaze was capable of. And and when he sent me those demos, when he sent me the, we didn't even know they were carbon monoxide demos. He didn't even know they were carbon monoxide demos. He knew that he had made some demos. And if you listen to the interview, you know, he, he, he says, hey, this this one might be for the boys, meaning uh, Bloodline Harmony. Um, we, we didn't know if these demos might feature other bone, you know, if these could be for a Bone Thugs uh, album. It was that early on. But we we knew the guy was special, and and I think we were really pitching for him to do this project or or whatever that project may have been, because we had no fucking idea. And and here it is, man. Here it is. Uh, I'm I'm really proud of you know of Blaze. He he's well, a the, he's the, a smart guy that set a goal, and it's fu- it's fun to see that goal uh, accomplished. And that's what I thought the whole way. So, so, but, but I'll even say before that, you know, throughout the years, you know, you and I, and, and even throughout this show, we always talk about the law of attraction, visualizing, you know, creating our own reality. And also throughout the years, like myself and, and Smokey from Lyrical Fusion and, and you and I as well, you know, we found, we didn't find, but there'd be like artists that were like, this guy needs to, 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 to come about, you know what I mean? And, you know, and we did like control experiments on Devin, the dude and UGK and Twista, all these guys before they were big Eminem and, and then they blow up. Now I don't have like direct hands in it, but prayer fields and intentions and stuff. And like, I've been like praying for blaze for about a year, not, not praying in the same way, like religious people do it, but I've always maintained him in my mind just to be like, let this brother do good, man. Let, let this guy's dreams come true. He has, uh what do they call it um his his heart is pure you know what i'm saying like that i've always i just had him in my prayer field and so as i was driving to the bone thugs and harmony concert was when i got to hear carbon monoxide for the first time because you know i was traveling going to your show and and then i'm, I'm just getting backpacking i'm like oh i gotta go to the bone show and, and i'm driving and listening to carbon monoxide and i'm just envisioning I'm just envisioning Blaze at the board, just thinking to himself, like, yo, can you believe this is real life, man? I mean, he he's mixing a busy bone album that he's on. It's not like he's just some like engineer. He, he yeah. actually, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole vision all came together and then it, it manifested into reality and he was doing it. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, bro, he just must be like this. I can't believe this is real life. And I, you know, and, and so, and it, like busy's voice like every every part of the album like love was put into this this wasn't just like some you know put together and we always talk about you gotta you gotta put all that love and passion and labor into making something come out so perfect and when you do it it becomes immortal and i just felt like he put all that into the beats to the to even the measures and even like bringing certain instruments in certain vocals in certain echoes in certain double voices in it was like all of it I got to experience and and like we're talking about Blaze, it's Busy Bones album, right? But like if if you're wondering from my perspective how I'm experiencing it like through Blaze's eyes and Busy's the instrument, Busy's the, you know, this is a Busy Bone carbon monoxide, but like my whole experience of, of it since I've experienced so many Busy albums uh, was through, you know, through Blaze. Like when I heard Heaven's movie, that I was experiencing it all through Busy Bone. You know, I got to hear Busy to to express who he was, 
And so I already know about Busy, but this one I got to hear and, and feel Blaze's soul throughout that whole thing, the love he put into it, the labor he put into it. I, I, I've, I was able to experience every minute, every hour, and every like just crazy sleepless uh, nights that he put in to just make that thing so perfect for all the fans. So that's why I appreciate it. I don't even know if the album is as good as I'm saying it is, but like those, when I experience that album, that's what I'm experiencing is, is, is knowing what all went into it. And, and then, and then just the gift that it was given for, for, for him to receive the gift from busy to get that opportunity. And it's one thing to get the opportunity, but it's another thing to walk through the door. Most people say they want the opportunity, but not too many people know what to do with it when they get it. And he took it, ran with it and gave us an immortal masterpiece that will live on forever. And he did it, man. He, he, he was the bone fan that became the busy producer. And that's it, man. I love carbon monoxide. And I think it's one of those albums. It's a different kind of album. It's, it's, it's kind of like AT aliens by, by outcast. When you think of outcast AT aliens, it's a masterpiece album, but you can't really pinpoint a single song on the album that you're like, this is, this is the, the, the hit, you know, there's no first of the month on carbon monoxide, but it's that it's a just plus press play album. And it's like a chilling, like soundtrack to life where you don't really focus on any individual track. You're just like chilling. It's like a vibe that's there and it's, it's cohesive. It's, it's consistent. It's blaze and it's busy. And I just love it. I love carbon monoxide. I love the story behind it. I'm happy. I can't believe this really happened that we're even talking about this. So props to everybody involved and, and the fans for, for supporting the project. So I hope you guys got yeah. what you wanted. The the fans had a lot to do with it. I know the fans had a lot to do with, with making sure that it happened. And, and I feel the same way, you know, for me, this will always be, you know, the, the album that blaze did with busy. Um, you know, and, and it's because we knew about it before. You know, if, if you guys go back and you listen, how many times, John, did I say, yo, Blaze has something cooking. Busy's got something cooking. There's something going on that I can't tell you all about. And that's because, you know, I stayed talking to Blaze and I knew what the fuck was going on. And I knew what was happening and I knew what they were working on. And, you know, I'm I'm just, I'm I'm thrilled with the promotion. I'm thrilled with busy bones website i was thrilled with the ordering when when you with the website with the clicking on the fucking skull the two editions the gold edition uh all that shit i'm i'm fucking tickled about bro because that's the stuff that that bone fans love right everything that i just said and more the 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 cover being like thugs cry but it's not thugs cry um just all these he, little things that I'm saying. These are the things that we loved as Bone fans. And and, and he even, did that. even yeah, and he even took like constructive criticism from people. Remember, he put out some drafts and people weren't feeling it. He was like, Okay, you ain't feeling this? That's fine. Let, let's uh mm-hmm. how about this one? And then people like these like, I'm not trying to push anything on you that you don't I'm trying to give you what you want. So, you know, that was excellent too. Like if all companies would do something like that. And uh, also, I don't know if I told you. I hope I sent you a screenshot of it when I. It's amazing, Blaze. Blaze like correctly ran the think tank. If you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. And, and and get this. I hope I sent you a screenshot. But but when I ordered when I pre-ordered the album, there was a there was like like a little bone head that you click a skull that you click on, like even like little, little details that didn't need to be there were even there, even on the pre-order. Like most of the time a pre-order is just like handled by some third party, you know, company, but uh, blaze even put in little things like bone skulls into the whole entire experience. So even when I was pre-ordering it, I even got yeah. like cute little, like just little attention to detail that showed me that like, every, cause imagine, this is what I thought too. When I saw that little attention to detail, I'm like, this guy's got so much more stuff on his plate right now that he even had it in him to find a way to put a cute little bone skull on the pre-order. Like that just, it just blew me away, man. I think that's just him understanding what bone fans want. And those are the, those are the little details that I think bone fans appreciate that have got lost because you know, those things that happen with bone used to happen with 
all rappers, with all albums, all these little details and all this shit they put in the promotion. That used to happen with everybody, bro. Um, but I don't think all fans appreciated it. Like, Bone fans really submerged themselves in the, you know, the the liner notes and, and all that shit and the promotion. And, and I don't think all fans cared about that shit for other rappers. And I think that's why that, that shit was easily faded away as time went by. Uh, but Bone fans missed it. And I'm not saying it's just Bone fans. I think that there's certain um, legions of fans out there that miss that piece of music. But Bone fans are definitely a big one. And Blaze was so smart to say, hey, in instead of continuing with this trend, let me give them what they want. They want two CDs and one to be extra special. Yes, two CDs. They want two compact discs, physical, real discs that they will feel in their hands and they will look at and they will they will go over every single stitch in line of. They want that. They want, they want the skull to click on. They want it to feel the way that it feels when you listen to a bone CD. Um, and, and the lead up, I again... We're, we've already gone on it way longer than I want to, but the guy deserves every word that we're saying. Uh, I'm so proud of BTNH alumni Blaze uh, for accomplishing what he did. We've given we've given Blaze so much praise right now for this Busy Bone album. I, I, I think we should jump in and, and actually talk about the fucking album uh, and give this motherfucker Busy Bone some praise because I, I had fucked up earlier and I said a song for you, but what I meant was I, I don't think that there's been anticipation for an album like this since probably Crossroads 2010. I don't remember getting pumped for the Wonder Years thing um, that much. I do yeah. remember being really excited for Crossroads 2010, like really excited, um, but for different reasons than this. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I might not have been all the way wrong. I think that a song for you conjured up a lot of the same feelings that carbon monoxide did for me. Crossroads 2010 was a different, different type of excitement, but, e but either way, it's been nine years since I was this excited for a busy bone project. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's crazy as I'm thinking about this now, the three people that I know of, like in my narrative, a busy that brought busy back to us, uh, you know, number one being Frank Nitty, uh, you know, kind of like helping busy back into health after, you know, he was on his journey and then Excel beats making the all I'll ever know track. And then, you know, and that kind of like resurrected busy to, uh, to we're saying, wow, wow, here's what busy could sound like. And then blaze doing uh, carbon monoxide. And we've had all three of those people on the show, which is great. Like that's crazy. Um, but as far as and, – and, and I'll say this too, if you guys were wondering, you know, when Carbon Monoxide came out, Cecil was doing his six-month thing, and I was literally on September 12th, which was the day that Carbon Monoxide dropped, I was out in at, – at the show, at the festival with, with Cecil West and Cairo Wolf, and my intention was, was for us to go live – me and Cairo and do a, a live <laughs> play of carbon monoxide as it dropped at midnight, but there was no cellular signal out there for us to either live stream or be stream the, uh, the album. And I'd hadn't received my copy of carbon monoxide yet in the mail. So I, I it's not like I could have had a physical with me because I left on September 12th to fly out there and the CD didn't arrive till like a week later. And I'm not even sure if I had it by the time I went to the Bone concert. Uh, so that was the plan was to go live and, and review it. And then like when it didn't happen, some people were hitting me up. They're like, yo, you didn't, how come you didn't do a carbon monoxide review yet, man? You, you know, you let your boy blaze down. I'm like, dog, I'm not even home. Like, I, it, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's why that never happened. And, and like, I felt bad. So if like blaze is hearing this, like, yo, our intention was fully to bring the show back to do carbon monoxide, but there's the time and, the date of everything, we were not even we were not even near a microphone and our cell phones to even go live. There was no oh, yeah. opportunity to do that I, either. I had I had Lippy and, and Wolf on a on a fucking golf cart, whipping them around at high speeds on a golf cart, uh, while smoking weed and uh, doing crazy shit. I, I'm smoking weed, driving this golf cart with Lippy 
and and Wolf on the golf cart. How crazy is that? How crazy is my life? And a few times we had some other, uh, you know, minor hip hop celebrities on that golf cart too. Who, uh, yeah. you know, whoever, whoever we had, we, we, yeah. uh, of course, of course out there, um, I, I, you know, I don't know how many names people on here will know, but I will mention that, you know, Lazy Bone was on Twisted's album and, uh, we had Twisted out there. Uh, so, you know, we, we had quite a few people and, uh, of course, Wolf, Wolf and John were out there. It was the highlight, a highlight of my weekend getting to, to kick it with, uh, with Johnny and and wolf wolf who we had met through the show uh was an instrumental part of helping me pull is, isn't that crazy i meet wolf through this show we do this i build a relationship with the guy and then we we do a bunch of heavy duty work uh outside of beyond the harmony and um you know now now he's working with my label he's doing uh he's doing some fucking artwork for members of my label and shit and the the artist that made strength and loyalty is is working on one of my artists cover it's fucking yeah. crazy world yeah man i mean I, you know i haven't even gotten to tell you how good of a time i had with Cairo wolf on those three days i'm so happy you paired me and him together um to to go through those days because i I don't know how my experience would have been if we weren't partnered together and got to spend all that time. It made it made the whole journey like like because it was a spiritual journey for me to to go all the way out there. I mean to go into like a complete foreign environment, um, you know, and and all the awesome hospitality that you showed myself and Kyra Wolf. And then we had we talked bone like yo after after the first night of the show when we got back to the to the cabin. I think Wolf and I stayed up till like 5 a.m. telling Bone stories. <laughs> I was fucking like, we didn't talk. We just talked Bone for freaking hours and hours and hours. And I, I like, we didn't even, like, we only covered like like 10% of what we had to talk about. Um, You know, we were talking primarily of like, it was an, exp and what was cool about it was it was like an expansion on the show. Because he was telling me stories of the, um, of strength and loyalty and like all the behind the scenes, like all the stuff that you can't talk about on this show, <laughs> um, you know, to the public, it was, it was really good yeah. stories, um, real crazy yeah. perspectives. And what I got out of this so much is that, I mean, maybe I just don't know enough real people, man, because Wolf is a real, real dude. Like when I say real, I don't mean like, Hey, let's go rob a bank. I'm saying like, he's so true to his, he's got a code of honor that he lives by and he stays yeah. with the integrity to it. And just his integrity and his code of honor and like how he sticks to his principles and how he and he's the guy is so given and um and just so just so real so i i really appreciated the time he also he he reminded me of my cousin who you know my cousin's the one that brought me into rap music he, who showed it to me so it was kind of like getting to spend time with a family member and um and he is family he's beyond the harmony family so it was a perfect parent. I can't believe I got to spend a whole weekend with Wolf at Cecil West show. It was like, it's like so much to take in. And then, and then even you, me and, and Wolf at the end of the second night, we were in that, like that ticket booth talking bone at like five o'clock in the morning again. <laughs> oh, I forgot all about that shit. I was so, let me tell you, I was so tired at that point, bro. I, I was like, I, w I was just cruising in like uh, uh in in neutral like I I had no idea what was going on. You had seen that I had every every aspect that you could put your body through. I had put my body through that weekend, uh, mental, physical, and uh, running on very little sleep, <laughs> smoking copious amounts of of <laughs> marijuana. John, you probably hadn't seen that much marijuana since you filmed the lyrical fusion videos in the nineties. Yeah, that was uh, copi that that was that was copious. That was phenomenal, and, and it's and it's. I'm probably the only person that was completely sober <laughs> for the three I'll, days. I'll, t I'll tell you what was a, a such a wonderfully balling feeling for me as I got uh dirt ball uh the dirt ball formerly of the Cottonmouth Kings, uh, which I I assume most band uh, Bone fans know the Cottonmouth Kings. So um, I got dirt ball, and he had just pulled up. And I got him on the golf cart and I pulled dirt ball right up to the stage. And, and, and what's going on on the stage is the 420 sesh. And we have that cannon and the cannon is just blowing. Did, did you or did you or Wolf ever see the, the weed cannon at all? 
No, no. You guys and missed I, the weed cannon. It, it went I, off I, twice. I, I wish I saw you with Dirtball, man. That that would have that would have made my life because uh, his performance was the the like outside of outside of the main people. Um, Dirtball, Dirtball, his performance was so memorable. That guy is a pro, a freaking pro. Dirtball, but I did not see. Guy. He, he he pulled up with his DJ. They jump on the fucking golf cart. I bring him right to the fucking stage. I I, I bless him with some weed, and uh, I bring him right right to the stage. And we have that weed cannon, and you you fill that weed cannon up with like fucking three ounces of weed, and then you light it, and it just blows weed. When uh, and 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 they just walk right into it, and uh, you know, Dirtball is just like yes. Yes, I'm home. And Dirtball, Dirtball rocked the stage and ended up staying that night. He stayed till the next fucking day. He's a cool motherfucker. So he yeah. had, uh, you know, Dog, Dirt, I, Dirtball's I, cool. The, the times I got to like see him, you know, in like in person, it, he, it's like it's it's stained in my memory. Just his his like his frame, his head, his outfit, the way he walks, like. I just I see like right now I'm just envisioning it and then I'm thinking of his performance like how I was freezing cold but I was like damn this guy is so good like he was such a pro I couldn't believe his enunciation his his breath control his delivery like dirtball really won me over I'm I'm a fan for life now because that that was that was remarkable and just and when I saw like everyone's like, yo, you know that he slept in the tents tonight, or he was, yeah. you know, he he stayed. I was like, this guy's a freaking superstar, and he's chilling with everybody at this uh this festival with all these tents. This is crazy. So Dirtball, oh, is- bro, he kicked it, he kicked it, he kicked it like donkeys the whole fucking. He didn't even want to leave. They had to catch a flight. He's he he wanted to stay till Sunday because we had Says Crew from Strange Music out there on Sunday, uh, and I actually did you and you and Wolf's. Uh, plan, planning wrong because I, I would have loved to have y'all right at the end. The end of the festival was so lovely uh, with Says Crew. They they did such a great job shutting it down. And uh, Dirtball wanted to stay for them, and they ended up having to leave. Uh, but we got Dirtball, you know, really taken care of. He he stayed, like I said, he stayed right in his vehicle. He did. I, I gave him a cabin down with y'all. I gave him a cabin down with y'all and he was like, we're probably going to stay right here in my car and just party. And then that's what he did. So, you know, we partied out there, me, Wolf, Dirtball from the Cottonmouth Kings, Twisted. It, it was such a good moment. Me, you and Wolf just chilling on that golf cart at the end of the second night, uh, watching Twisted shut it down because I, I knew I had reached grand success uh, in that moment. It was, it was really cool. Uh, to be able to share that that moment with with uh, you and Wolf, you and you and I, of course, have had a friendship for I, I don't even know twenty years, um, some some shit. And uh, Wolf, Wolf is one of these guys that I've known for such a limited amount of time, and yet I, I feel like I've known him twenty fucking years. So it was uh, it was, yeah. it, was it was a really <laughs> cool time. Yeah, yeah, and and you know I'll say this too, like you know everyone's wondering like where the heck is Cecil? Why why is Cecil gone six months? And you know there's even been aspects of me I'm like what? And then when I got there and I saw what you created, I mean it's a kingdom, bro. Beyond the Harmony fans, Cecil West created a kingdom, a freaking kingdom. And and just thinking like you know going back to the things that we did, and you're like I'm like hey how did you start rapping? And you're like lyrical fusion, final toast, bone thugs in harmony eternal, and I'm thinking. You know, I, t- I told Wolf this. I was like, this is all Cecil West. But I planted a seed 20 years ago, and there's a piece of this that I'm like, I- 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 somehow I had an impact on making this happen. I didn't put a single piece of effort into it. Cecil West did and his and his entire staff. But, like, this is this is like I'm the grandfather. Like, I felt like um, – like meeting my kids that I never knew, like I was a bad, like I was a, a deadbeat dad. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm finally meeting my whole family. And it's not even like the first generation, it's the second generation family. And I'm just seeing like this whole world that got created out of, you know, some things that I did with my buddies in 20 years ago. Um, and, you know, it had, had, a, had a minor impact to make a kingdom created. And I got, and, yeah. and I felt honored to be there like, hey, look what, Look what, you know, something you just did had a piece of this spawned this kingdom and, and you're our guest of honor here. And here's all these celebrities you can watch and, and see and watch the performance. And we're going to, I want to take you around on the golf cart. You get to chill with the general Cecil West and Cairo Wolf. And then some of the other people that came on the cart, like block and, 
and others. So I got treated to a VIP experience by Cecil West. It was magnificent. Um, and the best part about it too, is that you know Cecil and I have been working on projects for about 20 years and getting to see this, this was, you know, we project what something is gonna be. And I got to see Cecil's vision at its finest point. There's been, I've had opportunities to go see some of his other shows. Had I seen them, I would not have been as impressed because I would have seen the evolution towards what I got to see. But since I didn't see all that and I got to see it at its, at its mature, like I got to see a, a fully created adult in its prime. And um, actually it's not even in its prime, it's at its like, it's just becoming great. And I got to see what all the work with the six months, all the hustle, all the envisioning, all of it, I got to see it come to fruition and in and, and full and it was magnificent. So the six months we were away, just know that something beautiful was created and, and experienced not just by me, but by hundreds, if not thousands of people at that thing. And uh, just mad props to Cecil West, just know that Beyond the Harmony was away for a very good reason. And, uh, and it's been beautiful for everybody involved. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I definitely, I, I didn't want to leave the, the Beyond the Harmony audience for, for no good reason at all. And, uh, and any time that I can balance more than one thing at one time, I, I try to do it. And if I could have balanced both, I fucking would have, but, uh, you and Wolf got the opportunity to see that, you know, it would have been real hard, um, with, it, it, unless I had like a, a a staff like The Rock or or Joe Rogan who could literally just like walk me through aspects of my life, <laughs> you know, like I'm so envious of those guys where they can do this, this, and this, and then they can walk into their podcast and just sit down and then walk away. They don't have to do <laughs> anything else, right? Like, like, like if I could do that, uh, I, I'd be able to do so much more. But of course, because I'm such a intricate piece of of everything that we do. Uh, it's more than just me talking on the mic. It's more than just me throwing the show. And uh, and I had to walk away. Uh, but but we are it, it, at least kind of back. Here we are talking bone. Um, and and before we started talking about uh, Wolf and and getting to hang out with Wolf, which again, I'm I'm just gonna say sh shout out to my man Wolf. Uh, that that like made my summer. Uh, getting to, to kick it with with the wolf and uh, and and especially the two of us getting to do it um that that really made the summer uh but before we got into that we we were talking carbon monoxide and and you yeah. called it by the way john when you said <laughs> this this fucking episode here we are we <laughs> haven't even scratched the surface i didn't i didn't need to listen to shit uh we haven't even scratched the surface but um you know that we we had given blaze so much so much praise for for the record and and what Bra uh, what Blaze had done. And of course, Blaze, you know, knew what Bone fans wanted and, and Bone fans wanted to hear. But but it ain't shit without busy, right? It can't be a busy oh, yeah. record. You can you can have Blaze have all the great ideas and do all the great stuff that he wants. Uh, but it, it's not a busy record without busy bone. And I gotta say that, you know, in terms of stepping up and putting his all into a project. You know, there was that era of Busy Bone where I'm not going to say that he wasn't giving it his all, but but I mean, let's be fucking for real. There's there's some Busy albums that he put more into than than others, uh, and you could really tell that Busy was reinvested into trying to deliver the best project. I I'm not going to say that this is a classic. Uh, of course it's not an instant classic. So this, this could be a classic with, with time. Uh, so I can't say it's an instant classic, but I, I can say that they meaning busy and blaze and, and whoever else was involved. Um, but I would say primarily them, they went into this with classic on their mind, uh, with, with, with make a classic as the goal. And, uh, and, and it was refreshing to, here busy this invested into his music again um this this pairing was was phenomenal and uh it, it really i i listened to it this morning and uh you know it's like the foundation carbon monoxide we we know that the the name of the fucking album 
comes from that carbon monoxide, you know, Migos disc. A lot of the album was centered around the the Migos thing. Uh, and, and I will say for me, that that was kind of a dissatisfier for me. Uh, but but I know that that was the relevant busy bone thing was protecting the bone thug legacy um and and busy and lazy felt that the the bone thug legacy had to be defended and i would say even though i haven't heard all of annihilation i would say over the course of annihilation and carbon monoxide the the bone thug legacy was was fully protected um motherfuckers uh you know have to respect what was put down here uh and and that was a big focal point of of the album uh but we got to see you know a lot of expansion too i was really happy to see that the remember what easy said made made the album because you remember that was one of the demos that we got in the blaze interview yeah that's that's probably my favorite track on the album too i i think that's my favorite I i would also say you know the content on that one was a little different than than the other tracks because so many of the tracks were centered around the Migos. I know there was that track that was kind of centered around Busy's ex, um, but there was a lot of the Migos, you know, thing in here, which that was kind of like the, I'm not gonna say topic, but that was the foundation of this record. So they remember what Easy said. Mm, that gave me more. That that was the closest closest one to giving me the traditional bone vibe and and it's probably because of the content you know migos aren't traditional bone content so how can you have that traditional bone vibe content wise anyway uh you know excluding sound or anything but content wise you can't right that's never been bone content before uh but the remember what easy said really kind of gave you that familiar feeling yeah yeah and there was a the the perfect balance, and, and this is what we said too, and I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm going back on Blaze, but it was the perfect balance, as we said, of, you know, the old school vibe that you wanted from Bone, but also, you know, bringing it back, making it fresh and new and current. And I've also noticed, you know, Busy, Busy stayed with the times, like his persona is is reinvented, his fashion is reinvented to be like more um equipped for present day 2019 his mentality is 2019 you know he stayed current with with the social media and all the different trends of the internet he live streams all the time so busy's really you know even though he's in his 40s he's he's current and he's hip and he's still a rock star and the album is it has new styles on it as well as still keeping the the original sound that everybody loves and and the best part about this is is that we got and i think this is why this album sits really good with people is you know there's a there's a multitude of busy bone styles and starting with like alpha and omega he kind of changed the style and got away from like the heavens movie style and this album has the perfect blend of all of busy styles all together um into one so that's also what's cool about it because so you get old-fashioned busy you get uh, that middle era of the rapping busy, and then you even get like the new, uh, improve, new and improved busy bone. He's got new styles. Like that's the part that blew me away. I'm like, busy invented new styles on this album, and that's really. I cool. just didn't. I just didn't feel like I got the only. I guess busy that I I I felt like I was missing here was the real aggressive before i go uh yeah you know i i really and and you know it may be like you remember when tech nine said i'm gonna do these three albums of darkness and then i'm not gonna do this this fucking shit anymore like this isn't what i want to do i think busy's in a really good place in his life if if you see his live streams if you see uh you know the other things that he's doing in his life with his wife and his kid and he's you know so I think it's hard for busy to go to that place because I think that's on the intro uh, on the intro to, I remember what easy said, you know, uh, the ruthless skit track 11, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that uh, that right there captured like that old uh, crazy. So that even was the insane busy period, you know, fuck you bitch. 
and it's a perfect yeah. intro and it blends right into what easy said but i know what you're saying you're saying like i'm not talking insane busy i'm talking aggressive busy <laughs> yeah yeah i i wanted to yeah. i wanted to hear him really go off um you know just in a rhyme uh and it, it may just because it's it's old to me now the the migos thing is it was a little old to me so so with him going off on them i you know i i didn't I didn't get into that as much just because I'm like, bro, you know, between busy and lazy, they, they cook this situation. So it's like, I, I wanted to hear him go off somewhere, uh, on, on the album, but, but again, it doesn't make it a bad thing. It was just, you were covering that, like busy covered so much of his arsenal over this album. I was just pointing out that I didn't really get, get that necessarily. Yeah. Um, what I what what I'll say about the Migos disc um, is that it for most of it most of the it's it's vague enough to where you could insert whoever you want into there. I mean, he does say Migos a few times and then like a few play on words of it, but it's still vague enough to where you could just think of it as a rap song of like for instance, Enigma. Enigma is kind of like a blend between the Migos disc along with the police showing up at his dorm when he had that big big uh, gun. And then a couple other topics yeah. uh, blended in there with uh, DJ Quick and another thing and uh, uh, Big Boy and whatnot. But um, but it, like that song is cool. Like that's a cool diss track. That, and no, that the instrumental behind it just really makes it. You know, it's it uh, it's hypnotic, man. Like that's another part about this is that the instrumentals along with Busy, you know, doing his hymns and, and throughout the whole album. But there's enough that it you're recapturing that hip that hypnotic the hypnotized minds not 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 three six but you know that's the that's where i want when i listen to bone it's like i like how it usually takes my mind back in the days and like it makes you feel like you're floating and this album had moments like i remember what easy said i feel like like vibrations through my whole chest and i i come like i have a massage going like a like a like a machine massage where i'm in some kind of like uh, at the chiropractor right before I'm getting the acupuncture, <laughs> you know, it, that's, that's what, it, and in a good way, I'm not talking about getting my bones cracked. I'm talking about like the massage and everything. Like it's, it's a massage, man. So that's, that's what I'm liking about it, is the way it makes my, my physiology feel. I'm just chilling throughout that whole album. Like I said, this, this reminded me of AT aliens. It's like a chilling album. It's a state of mind. It's not even like you, you just push play and let that bitch ride. You don't even, you don't even go to any track. You just let it play. I, I, I'm just going to say, too, that I, I I also, I don't know how much Blaze played a part or didn't play a part in the videos that have dropped for this. Uh, but I got to say that I got an appreciation for the uh, the videos that have dropped. I think it's just the two. Um, but I made sure to, to review those videos as well. And I, I thought the quality was on point. No, you know, there wasn't like a mind-bending concept to either one of them but that's all right like uh I, you know so so rare that that's even a fucking thing now um but but i thought the videos were you know great just in terms of uh, you know we've seen some pretty shitty i've seen some shitty fucking bone videos uh that that just look like total shit and uh, yeah the alpha mentality you know, was cool with that like pure, that triangle looks so dope and um you know, busy has some some loud outfit on and uh, and the stalking me. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you about about stalking me. Um, actually, were you gonna say something? I, I was just gonna say I thought like when I looked at Alpha Mentality, I was like, man, if Blaze didn't have a lot to do with this, like I'm really I, I would be really surprised if if they said that Blaze just had nothing to do with that video specifically. So much so much of that video, I was like, bro, this is this is Blaze on his shit. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with, with it all overall. Like, like I listened to it in the gym this morning and, uh, it got me through my entire gym, my entire gym sesh. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy. Like, like you said, it's, it's really chilling. Um, the, the con, the content itself, just because the basis was the Migos was the piece that threw me the most. But besides, I mean that you know, no, nothing is perfect. Like I didn't go into this expecting Heaven's movie, uh, you know. So it's like this, 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 
album really this will stand the test of time uh you know I, I don't think this is one of these albums that that'll fade i mean he's got some albums that have faded i mean i, I don't see this happening i think this is going to be in this is in the big you know this this will be in his the big whatever it is how many how many big ones i'd say heaven's movie the gift uh yeah and even alpha and omega's Although I don't think people remember yeah. much about the Alpha Omega album, you know what I'm saying? Like if I said name a song besides, um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember. I understand. You know, yeah, like, I, I understand. You like name, a... yeah, everybody remembers that, but like, what else does anybody remember? Anything else from the album? Not that it's not good, and there's plenty of awesome songs on the album, but I think like when you think of that, you just think of I understand. Uh, but whereas. As you said, well, I, I love "Die gift. for You" from that from that album as well. But yeah, yeah no, yeah. I know what you're I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying though. So it's like, but but definitely, that's that's gonna go down as like, whatever part of the Big Five or whatever the fuck it is. Carbon monoxide earned its its place, um, in in the big in the big in the big yeah you know it, picture. It, you know, for the for, for the for the exercise, let's figure out the Big Five here. We got obviously Heaven's Movie, The Gift. I'm gonna throw yeah, Crossroads huh. 2010 at number three. Although no, I put uh -huh. Carbon Monoxide ahead of Car uh, Crossroads 2010 blew me away though in a way, in a different kind of way. I don't. It's it's a close yeah, that, tie. Yeah, that's man. what I was saying. That's what I was saying earlier. Like I I was excited for Crossroads 2010 for a different reason. Although I thought Crossroads 2010 was done really well as well. Um, but really well in a different way. That was not done by people that understood Bone or Busy. I think that was done. You know. Because people saw uh, something else that Busy could be, um, but either way, I, I think that one belongs up in there. Uh, we don't necessarily have to finish do them in order. We we just know that that belongs. Heaven's movie, The Gift, that belongs. Twenty ten belongs. Um, a song for yeah, you. A song belongs. for you. Yeah. Carbon monoxide and then belongs. Carbon monoxide. Um, yeah, and I can't think of a fifth that would replace. I mean, obviously the first four, you know, before carbon monoxide. You know, we know for sure the top four have his movie gift, song for you, and Crossroads 2010. Um, well, I don't know what number five was, besides carbon monoxide. The fans get hot about what ev ev evolution of elevation, elevation. And, and alpha. I I think I think people would put, and in fact, I bet you half the people listening right now would say, "What? How how do you not have Alpha and Omega on that top five? Um, because it is a good uh, well, album." I I, I do think that I do think that it starts to get in an interchangeable thing when you get into the 2010 uh, a song for you carbon monoxide you know I think some of that gets interchangeable is yeah. alpha and omega I, you know if, if anything well look if anything and this is just me being honest it's it's a fight for the fifth spot right now between alpha and omega and carbon monoxide um yeah. and and i say that because heaven's movie and the gift obviously have absolutely solidified those spots uh you'd be hard pressed to not say that a song for you in crossroads 2010 you know just fit the caliber of a of a superior album uh, and with that being said you know you got carbon monoxide and and you got alpha and omega now the reason why I think that they're close together right now is because, like you said, there's not much coming out of Alpha and Omega that is super notable, uh, and we can't we can't say that about Carbon Monoxide yet. It hasn't had that time, so I would say that it's going to surpass that album because o over time that one should surpass it because they seem pretty on each other's heels right now. Although I understand you know that that's 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 a big song you know that that's yeah. all that fucking album even needed was was i understand um because i don't know if the gift uh, see this this we get we get into some other we get into some other shit when we start talking this far but but either way carbon monoxide earned earned its spot i mean in in such a plethora in such a laundry list of albums eps make tapes collaboration albums you know just all kinds of things right in in such a, a list to even say that even if we said that it wasn't top five even if we said it was number six 
Yeah. Say, to say that it's the sixth best Busy Bone album with this many, with this, bro, this guy has such a amazing body of work. To say that you made the sixth best, which by the way, I think it's better than sixth best. Um, but but even if that was the case, what a what a fucking achievement to say you were part of that. And what an achievement for Busy to to release all these things. And if you're if you're me, all right, and I'm I'm hard on the bone shit. I know some bone fans praise every single thing they do. God bless y'all if that's what you do. I just go by what I feel. And what I feel is from a solo perspective, this is the best shit I've heard since 2010. Yeah, and I think this this album is gonna catapult <clears throat> i think i think this got busy primed for a a big deal follow-up you know i think mm-hmm. because because when i talked with busy in the car in 2017 he was like nah i'm not making albums anymore and i'm thinking you're not making albums anymore what come on bro come on man don't say that don't you're just gonna right off into the sunset new waves drop and that's it you're done and and you know at the time period new waves kind of felt like that was the the curtain, you know, the curtain was falling down and busy rising to the sunset. And, uh, but like so much has evolved since then. And this is like a new beginning. Like, I feel like, like that was the curtain on the bone thugs and harmony as we knew it. And like a new era has begun and busy's got his new kingdom going. And, uh, I think now that he's got this album and independently, and this is like more independent than strange music was independent. Like this was, you know, really independent and it charted, it charted. Like, like this is independent as you can get and it charted. That's a huge accomplishment. And so if I'm busy, I'm saying, Hey, I just dropped an album out of nowhere with a producer. Most of you guys haven't even heard of. I discovered a talent and we put together an album and it charted. We bone thugs and harmony fans, are still a force to be reckoned with that we could actually support an album that can chart. Imagine if the machine got behind me and I even started my own TV reality TV show with my wife and my kid and my, my extended family, you know, um, I'm ready for make, you know, let's, let's bring the machine back and put it on busy bone again. And so, um, so busy's done everything. Like, you know, bone fans are acting like nothing's happening. I'm like, dude, this is doing big. He's he's rebuilding a new kingdom, and it, it there's there's so many things lined up that most people don't even realize, and uh, and this carbon monoxide album I think is that catapult. I think this is you know it started with we saw the vision with all I'll ever know like oh wow imagine with the right producer how busy sounds, and then you get the whole album of Blaze, it charts an independent album charts, and then he's going on the Breakfast Club and a bunch of other shows, and and. Yeah, that's great. Independently to see. charting, and then imagine where that could go with like the machine behind them. If he didn't even get the machine at this point. So he, what I'm saying, I mean, he's positioned now. He's got leverage, and he's positioned now to to make a big move if he wants to. I think it was, uh, you know, it's it's it, it's great to see everything that he's doing. Like you said, Busy accepted social media, which has been huge. He's a social media entity now, which which is something in its own. Uh, in 2019, going into 2020, you need to be able to accept social media. In fact, your social media presence is almost bigger than your music. It's proven with a lot of the new artists on the way up that that their social media presence is more important uh, than their music. So it's been impressive to see busy reinvent himself uh i have not watched that interview yet but it's great to see him on platforms that matter uh you know you know platforms that matter right now currently and uh this this album and i'm gonna go back to blaze again this album blaze i would say the jam tv thing all these things are 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 huge and uh i'm i'm really happy you know, we're we're obviously always big busy bone supporters uh over here. And um it's been it's been great to great to see. I really hope that I will say and, and you kind of alluded to this and it's it's the elephant in the fucking room and, and I'm just gonna say it because I you know, I I would always tell Blaze or or Busy uh the great and I would never bullshit and to me there wasn't a 
there wasn't a massive standout. The closest thing to me is remember what Easy said. Um, there's a lot of songs on here I really like, but like there isn't a Thugs Cry level, you know, historic song. Uh, and and what I mean is, you know, we said Alpha and Omega, and you were like, well, hey, what do you remember? It's like I understand. Uh, I said died for you, you know, like there, there's certain songs that stick out. So in, in a nine piece, you know, nine years uh, from this record, you know, what are the songs that people are going to say, oh, that's the album with on it. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Enigma had a moment in the sunlight and I feel like Enigma yes, it did. Yeah. You know, the, the reception of that made it seem plausible to make the whole album Carbon monoxide had a big, you know, big buzz, but I feel like, I feel like people, the uh, carbon monoxide was Enigma was great. Carbon monoxide, yeah. I, I kept it a hundred when it dropped. It, it wasn't for me, but I also think that they were, you know, we we always gripe that. I mean, I just did it to you before the show that you know when they don't try new things. I think that was them trying new things and, you know, just just doing something else and you know it just it didn't fucking stick and and big fucking deal uh enigma definitely has i i think it's it's place i do think that that's something that people will remember years from now and, i think you know the enigma track yeah and 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 not to derail this into a whole nother direction but there was a surprise on this album that came out of nowhere and it was a pleasant pleasant surprise and was unanticipated that was uh Sinatra, the YBA, YBF Sinatra. Oh, YBL, yeah, yeah, yeah. YBL Sinatra. Um, I mean, it really, that, that was some cool, you know, features on that. We were wondering, like, how come uh, Little Busy's not on it, but you got uh, YBL Sinatra on it? And Yeah, uh, you know, so I, YBL was the, you know, I, I will say it was refreshing for me every time he came on. I thought he added something new and refreshing every time. Uh, I'm not going to say that I get tired of, of busy or bone or, or any of it, but I mean, you know, it's, it's 20 plus years. Like we, we know how they rap. We, we can expect it and, and it's what we love. Uh, but we also expect it. The, the, the bone, the, the bloodline harmony kids. Um, and, and in this case, we're talking specifically, uh, YBL, they really bring something new and and you hear that tinge of busy bone in his voice so it's like hearing bone but then like from a from a brand new place so that every time he came on there there wasn't a moment that i wasn't happy uh with him i saw that busy just did the entire carbon monoxide tour and you know ybl was with him on that tour i think that was great um, you know, that, that YBL was on that fucking tour. My only guess with Little Busy is that they're really focused on Little Busy being Little Busy and doing Little Busy, and and they're trying not to, uh, you know, I guess make Little Busy ride Big Busy's coattails like that um, would be my only guess there, you know. But, man, YBL Sinatra, ultra refreshing every time I heard him on the record. Um, what what what's your favorite? What's your favorite on it? What what's your favorite? And then we'll try to move away from this because we spent a lot of time on this. But there's so much to talk about. One one more time. Shout out to Blaze. Shout out to Busy Bone. Shout out to the fucking fans, uh, the Bone Cult. So many people, uh, so many different entities help make this this record possible. And I'm I'm really proud. You know that the they. they Busy's had the for the fans before, but doesn't this really feel like a for the fans fucking album? Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, I don't know if I, I don't know the full story behind uh, uh, behind Little Busy, but you know, while you were away, <laughs> while you were away, there was like this video by Little Busy where he was like sending like hollow threats at at like Busy and Bone, like man, if you don't pass the torch. I'm going to take the torch or something like that. I'm not sure if it was just a publicity stunt, uh, but like, n you know, now looking back, I'm like, yeah, a little busy wasn't on carbon monoxide. That's kind of weird. Maybe that's why he was mad. I don't know. So there was some kind of controversy going on. Maybe it was publicity. I'm not sure what it was. I don't know the full story. I didn't read into it. I was, 
you know, this was during the time we were all doing the traveling. So I don't know the whole story behind it, but just something was going on there uh, for a minute. And that might explain it as far as uh, my favorite. That when carbon monoxide oh. dropped, I was like, I was impressed with Busy's rap style on it. But like something with the beat, the beat was cool. Like it was cool with how he incorporated the the East 99 elements into the beat, but it just wasn't my kind of song. It's not that the song wasn't good. It's just, it's not my, my thing, but Enigma was like, yo, this is, this is every, it builds it, you know, it, it did all the things that I wanted in a song and busy had a new style on it. And busy had this rapid fire part in the song where I'm like, yo, does this guy breathe? Um, I did a video on it too, by the way, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, so I, I did review Enigma, but that's not my favorite track. I think remember what easy said is my favorite track on it. Um, because I like, it's like, it's, it's really a club always and busy, you know, it, this is getting comedic. I feel like everything I'm saying is like, Hey, you know, real good album, but you know, that blaze <laughs> and, but I like, the way, <laughs> you know, blaze, you know, that he does the chorus on it. Um, he also adds in these like extra like layers to the vocals. And so like, those are the collabos I like where it really feels like the two people really, you know, incorporated together into it. Um, it's got a real, that the vibe of that track is my kind of vibe. Like that's what, that's the the essence or like the uh, the mood and the sound that I want in a track. But uh, I also like, like the chorus got too much, but um, trophies, I like what was going on there, but the, the chorus got, I'm a Pam. It, it, it was, some things get repeated too much. Like even like with Lyrical Fusion, I wish we did a version of Getting High on the South Side where there wasn't so much chorus. You know, it, it's like, all right, I get it, I get it. Um, but if I had to take one, I'd say remember what Easy says my favorite. Uh, but uh, I know I know what your I think I know what yours is, but um, that's my favorite. A Alpha Mentality is a dope track, but remember what Easy says. It is, yeah. It has everything. It is dope. It has everything you you had I told have. me that too. You had told me that going into it, you're like, you're gonna, you're gonna dig Alpha Mentality, uh, and it and it comes early. Uh, I think it's like the third track, um, and it and it came yeah, early. Well, well, when we were talking offline, I think you were saying, um, all, all we got is each other. I think was uh, is that your favorite one? I I think all that might be my, you, I, I I think that might be my favorite. If it's not that one, I you know, I mean. What Easy said is nipping on its heels, and 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 the only reason I'm not giving it to remember what Easy said is because we had that demo, and I and it's comfortable to me, so there's a certain comfort of knowing the song as long as I have, um, mm -hmm. that that that, that kind of gives it that like edge, you know, because it's it's familiar, so you know I'm trying not to give it right to that one because it's it's so familiar. You, you know what I'm mm. saying, um, and and I and I may not be giving one of these other tracks the fair shake, and and a bunch of them grabbed me when I was like listening to the record, but all we got is each other, you know that 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 one re I mean that one grabbed me. YBL grabbed me. The the you know biz I thought busy. I mean bro, you you didn't think busy bones like performance on that track that that you know he kind of he kind of he almost started to touch on what i wanted a little bit in there not i guess not really the angry busy but uh he he definitely kind of you know just brought it with that one and and i thought that um i i think i think what i like about that is i feel like ybl and what he's saying is the most honest and and real the most honest and, and real rendition of, of that in the bone world that we've heard in a long time bone saying that, you know, they're, they're united and they're brothers and all that. Well, well, I do believe all that because they've had all these years and they're still a group and they're still together. There's obviously 20 years of trials and tribulations and, 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 you know, we, we know a lot of the shit there. And, and I mean, even now we can see that the group isn't in a great place together. Uh, you know, busy strain from the group right now. Um, when YBL is saying those words in this, uh, I really feel like he's, he's obviously referencing bloodline harmony, which, you know, even before I went kind of on sabbatical, I, I saw that things weren't 
uh, perfect over there, it didn't seem like, and, and it sounds like there, there still may be some shit going on. It doesn't feel to you, and, and, and maybe you just got to go back and hear it again to, to hear my perspective, but it feels really honest. It doesn't feel like he's just saying those things just because it sounded good or whatever. YBL sounds really honest on that, on that track. Like this is, this is, he really means this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, <clears throat> that yeah, it's funny. Cause like when I was listening to that one earlier, when we were talking about it offline, I, I this thought came over my mind where I was like, man, we don't, we've grown so accustomed and so used to to just Bone Thugs and Harmony being such amazing lyricists. And I know we're talking about YBL, but I'm just, I heard the YBL's part and then it blends into Busy's part. And I just remember thinking it. like, I'm yeah, really I was like, it. I was like, dang, this guy's been doing this forever. And he's still, it, it just, this one thing is, it blows so many rappers out of the, like entire careers out the box. And like, even, you know, there's a like like we were saying, there's some busy albums you're like, eh, whatever. But throughout this album, like every track, even if it's a song that you're like, oh, this isn't as we were talking about, it's, there's not that many like super solid gold hits, but the album tracks are good. It's like a really good album. That's what I was saying. It's like a just push play. But the 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 deliveries were so spoiled that we don't appreciate the intricacies that Busy's doing, um, the different tonations of his voice. Um, the patterns. I mean, just his his style on this song, "All We Got Is Each Other," is completely different to his style on "Stalking Me." It's completely different yeah. to his style on "Enigma." It's completely different to "Carbon Monoxide." You know, this is a, a completely different to "Alpha uh, Alpha Mentality." Like his style flips in so many different ways on this album. You know, whereas like you listen to a Mob Deep album, you're hearing one style for the whole entire album, a Nas album one style for for 60 minutes alpha Menta uh, uh carbon monoxide is it's the same guy doing a bunch of different styles throughout and where it's but it's not too crazy to where you're like damn i mean you know one you know, it's it's cohesive it's consistent and it's it blends very well and we don't appreciate the talent level because we're so accustomed to it yeah i i agree with that i i had said that that that's actually a great segue um it's a great segue in into uh <laughs> the crazy bone album Beyond the heart.